welcome back. My name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we're going to be talking about two new products from Shiseido. We have the Shiseido Skin Soft Blurring Primer and the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Oil-Free Foundation, and this does have SPF 30. So we're going to be discussing these. Let me first start off with some product details. So this is the new foundation. I purchased shade 110 Alabaster, which is my normal shade for uh, Shiseido. And I do find that this shade is a little bit too light for me. So I would actually go up to the next deepest shade for, for me that's neutral, just because it's just a little bit too light in this particular formulation. So according to Shiseido, this is a weightless, medium to full, buildable coverage foundation. It uses light adjusting technology to visibly lift, refine, and smooth for a luminous finish in any light. It retails for $47. It comes in 30 shades and it's 30 milliliters. And it does use octanoxate and titanium dioxide for an SPF 30. And it has a 24 month shelf life. It's made in the US. Now, according to Shiseido, this formula addresses three major obstacles that impede radiance. And those include fine lines and wrinkles, loss of hydration, and uneven skin tone. It also provides 24 hour hydration. I did not test that. <laughs> and uh, again, it has an SPF of 30. It's water resistant, transfer resistant, crease resistant, smudge resistant. And we'll discuss my thoughts on this in a little while, but I don't believe all of those claims. <laughs> so just a spoiler alert. Now this foundation here to open it, it's a twist cap. I really do like the actual packaging of this. And let's take a look at the primer. The primer is also one ounce made in the United States. This one retails for $36. And it's a water-based primer and it uses advanced light diffusion technology to refine the appearance of pores, erase excess shine and blur imperfection for a soft focus finish. It advertises eight hour hydration and it says it absorbs oil instantly and throughout the day and it's colorless. And I have to say that, you know, I think it's, um, it's a decent primer. So this one here also has a 24 month shelf life. So right now I'm going to go ahead and show you the application of this. And I have been wearing this foundation for about a week and I have worn it in many different ways because some days I have reapplied this several times to try to find things that work best. So I'm going to discuss all of those thoughts with you in just a minute. So first we're going to do application and wear test, and then I will share my thoughts and notes. So far I have my skincare down and we are going to go in with the primer and we're going to keep this to the right side of my face. So here's the primer. You can see that it's a thin lightweight consistency and I probably won't use all that I just put in my hand. That would be enough for my full face. And pardon the noise, we got new neighbors and they are cutting down all the trees. So it's going to be like this all week, they said. So when you put the primer on, it feels like a lightweight gel moisturizer. It never completely dries down. Like it always stays feeling a little dewy in my opinion. And here's the difference with the primer versus no primer. And it has now been on for about one minute. So it has kind of set in. And you can definitely see a difference in the blurring effect with the primer versus without the primer. I think that this primer would actually be very comfortable to wear on its own during like the summer and so forth. If you don't feel like wearing makeup, you know, I think for me, that would be a good purpose for this particular primer. Now we're gonna go in with the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation and here it is. We're going to put this on both sides. Now I have worn this for about a week now and I've worn this many different ways. I have found that the very best way for me is to just use a small amount and blend it out with a brush. They do recommend using fingers to apply, start in the middle and work outward. And I tried that, but the coverage is a bit too heavy for me. So it ended up 
it, it didn't look good. Now the color of this foundation is, it's my normal color for Shiseido 110, but it's a little light. And I forgot to mention, this is the Isom T47 that I'm using. I'm just gonna add a little bit more here around the nose. And I think that is plenty of foundation. Let me show you what the finish looks like right now. So I could go ahead and add more to cover up the redness, but I have found that if I apply more, it just, it doesn't look seamless. and looks like it's breaking up a little bit. So let me show you. We'll add a little bit more to the cheeks. And then when I show you throughout the day, I'll show you what it looks like. You can actually kind of already see here how it's like, you know, not completely smooth. It's like a little, you can see the, the my actual skin through the pigmentation like bubbles. It looks better on the side with the primer, in my opinion, than it does without the primer. Now, this foundation feels a little tacky on the skin. It feels dewy. So it feels like a dewy moisturizer sitting on your skin. I can feel it and that's not something that I enjoy. I don't like being able to feel my foundation. So in my experience, even after all day wear, this feeling does not go away. It, it doesn't really seem to dry down completely on me. So I probably won't do a full wear test with this today because I really just, I don't like it, <laughs> but I will wear this for a while to show you how it performs. So I'm not gonna set the whole face, but I am gonna set right here just so you can see what happens. I'm using the Givenchy Poudre Premiere, which is basically like that light pink shade that they have in their um, powders. And this is the Refer 25. So this is what this area looks like with powder. Now I'm gonna add a little blush today. This is the Shiseido Minimalist with Powder Blush in number seven, Setsuko. And I think the texture of these is really cool. I really like them. I'm just gonna add a touch more. I'm not really gonna be adding much makeup so we can keep the foundation the star of the show. I just want a little color since this is a little bit light on me. And then for eyes today, I'm taking the Shiseido Aura Dew in Lunar 01. And this is a pretty cool product. Um, mine is actually loose in here. You can see that it falls out and it's actually brand new. So I find that to be a little disappointing, but this, we're just gonna apply a little bit with the fingers and you can use this all over. I don't really like it on the cheeks for me because it's a little bit too sparkly, but I do like it on the eyes and it works well as a topper to add some glisten or just on its own like this. And for eyes, I'm gonna just line them with this Kajal Ink Artist from Shiseido. This is in Byroto Green 06. And you can see it's like a chubby stick. So we're gonna just line these. And I'm taking the Shantakai Eye Blend Brush and I'm just smudging that a little bit. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more of the Aura Dew on top of that. So the liner is not quite so prominent and we got more sparkle. You can see that if you work quickly, it does smudge out and the liner is very nice. You know, you could use this more, it's not just an eyeliner, you can use it all over as an eyeshadow um, crayon or pencil as well. But I personally like to use it kind of smoked out like this. It keeps the base right by the lash line a little bit deeper. And then yet yeah, we've still got a little bit of green. So just taking a little bit more of the Ordu and tapping over that. There, so now we've got some green sparkle there. And for lips, I'm gonna go in with this. This is the Visionary Gel Lipstick from Shiseido in 211, Rose Muse. And again, this is a pretty interesting texture also. It's very slippery, goes on very smoothly. Like you really have like absolutely no drag. It feels very silicone based actually. All right, so this is the foundation up close after it's been on for a little bit. So you can see a little patchiness. This is the side with the primer. And you can just kind of see how it's starting to gather in lines already. So this is what the foundation looks like from a distance. This is the side with the primer. And this is the side without. It's been about half an hour since I had it on now just because I keep getting interrupted. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like from a distance for the basis of our wear test. So you can see it doesn't look super bad or anything, but anytime I make facial expressions, notice how it like stays. So it kind of like freezes. I think it emphasizes the fine lines and so forth. So I have to say though, I do really like the eye look. <laughs> so there's right, that. This is a five hour update and this is what it looks like from a distance. And let me move you in closer. This is the side with the primer. And you can see it is, you know, fading and so forth a bit. This is the side without the primer. And if you look at the texture on the skin, you can kind of see like everything kind of breaking up. And you can see where the blush is, that it's smoother. And that's really because the foundation has kind of moved away on both sides. So this foundation just doesn't stay well. The eyes are doing fine. I think overall the skin, it just makes everything look really old. So I am not a fan. Okay, this is my final update. It has been seven hours since I applied everything. This is what it looks like from a distance. This side has a primer. This side does not have a primer. And you can see how it settles in the lines and so forth. Let me bring you in closer. So this is the side with the primer. And you can see, even without the primer, both sides, it's really worn off a lot in the face. Actually, I feel like the side without the primer looks a little bit more evenly worn off. You know, I, I see redness from my cheeks, you know, peeking through and so forth. But I actually think that the side with the primer looks a little bit more red, but it looks smoother, if that makes sense. So it's sort of like I'm seeing the blurring effect of the primer, but the foundation that was on top is gone. And you can see right around my lips, the little lines, how everything's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like sticking in there. And it kind of holds that position. You know, it's like freezing my face in that position. Uh, definitely has settled here into the forehead lines right around the eyes you know overall i just i think this foundation looks very aging on me it still feels moist it never really dried down and i definitely have transfer so here is a tissue and you can see i still have foundation coming off i don't have a ton left on i feel like a lot of it has kind of come off already but you can see that there is still foundation coming off it's like it never set um, just in case anybody's interested in the eyes, this is how they have held up over seven hours. 
All right, and let's that's start it. off with my thoughts on the primer. I actually think this is a very nice primer. Now, it's not gonna be totally mattifying. It does mention that it absorbs oil, and I think it does absorb excess oil, but not to the point of drying your skin. So your skin will still remain a little dewy. Even when you just use this primer on its own, you know, your skin stays nice with a light dewiness to it. So definitely something that I find to be comfortable. And I think it really worked well with this foundation. And I also tried it with another foundation just to test it. And I do think that this is a nice primer. You know, it's, pretty weightless on the skin. It feels like a lightweight gel foundation. It is water-based, which I find to be very comfortable. And when I apply this over my sunscreen, you know, after a minute or so of having it on, I definitely feel that it absorbs some of that extra like oiliness or greasiness that I get from the sunscreen, but yet not completely, not to the point where my skin is dry. It still maintains a little bit of that dewiness to it. And it definitely does blur my Course. And you could see that during the application when I did one side with the primer and one side without. So I would say basically once you put this on, you weigh about 30 to 60 seconds and you can really see a huge transformation between the side with the primer and without. Now for application of this, you don't need a lot of this. You know, I would say just a little bit about, I used half of what was on my hands during the application for half my face. So that that like pea size amount would be enough for my full face. And yeah, I like this um, primer. So I would repurchase the primer and it's definitely something that I think is nice enough to use just on its own, even without foundation, just to give your skin a little, you know, even evenness and just to, you know, kind of enhance your natural skin a little bit without adding any color. So. You know, for me with the redness, the ruddiness in my cheeks, this kind of blurs that a bit and I think it's a nice product. So primer, I like. Unfortunately, I do not like the foundation. As I mentioned during the application, Shiseido recommends using this either with a foundation brush or with their fingers. The finger application was more highly recommended and I have tried that a few times. And what they recommend doing is starting in the center, brushing it over with your fingers. I tried that with the smallest amounts and I found that I couldn't get completely even coverage. So it was obvious, you know, where, where it was a little bit heavier. Uh, so if I used a little bit more product, it just looked cakey and heavy. So I didn't, I didn't like finger application at all. Uh, I have used this with several di different foundation brush styles as well. And I've used varying amounts of the foundation. And for me to get this one to look the best, I need to go in with the lightest layer of foundation possible. So going in with multiple coats on this, it's just, it's not great for me. I think it ends up looking a little dewy and cakey throughout the day. So I personally do not like this foundation. It's not for me. However, people who have very dry skin I could see you liking this because it definitely has some radiance, some dewiness. As a matter of fact, the foundation never feels like it totally dries down. Um, it never completely sets on me. So when I apply the foundation, whether I set it with powder or not, if I then try to apply like a powder blush or something, it moves. Going back to the claims from Shiseido, it says it's medium to full buildable coverage. I agree with that. It's definitely a heavier medium and you can build this up to full coverage. Now as to the three major obstacles that it addresses, the fine lines and wrinkles, I feel like the foundation really gathers and emphasizes those. And uneven skin tone, I do think it helps, you know, the, the coverage essentially helps smooth out your skin tone. So that one does work. And I do feel like it is a hydrating foundation. As a matter of fact, it stays moist <laughs> the whole day. So, um, you know, two out of three in essence. 24 hour hydration, I did not test that. I had not worn it for a full 24 hours. And as for the SPF, I feel like with the use of the titanium dioxide, I do get a little bit of that white flashback. So if I'm taking like a photo or something, or if I catch, my face in a certain lighting, 
I see that white flashback you get with certain sunscreens. And I don't think it's just because I'm using a light shade of the foundation. I feel like it is due to the titanium dioxide because it really looks just like it does when I'm using like a full sunscreen. So I just feel like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't like that aspect of it either. Water resistant, transfer resistant, crease resistant, smudge resistant. I disagree. First, I'm gonna take a tissue here and let me just show you transfer resistance. So here you go. I mean, I didn't even wipe that hard and it definitely does transfer. I think that it creases. I think it gathers into the lines. And as I have this foundation on for a longer period of time, I definitely see creases throughout my face in spots that I did not really know <laughs> were wrinkly. Um, and again, since it does transfer, it also smudges. I feel like this never sets down. And as I mentioned, using like a, another product on top, I have to be really careful with application because I feel like the foundation moves and it never completely sets down. So for me, I do not like this foundation. I have normal skin to slightly dry, but maybe if you have very dry skin, this foundation will work better for you. I don't foresee it working well for anybody with oilier skin than mine, and I personally don't like it for my skin type. So I would love to know if anybody else out there has tried this. I know there are people out there who love this foundation. For example, my friend Jennifer at Just Glow Firefly, she loves this foundation, but it did not work for me. So I personally do not recommend it, but I do think the primer is a nice option and it worked well. So if you're looking for a primer, you know, this could be something that you would be interested in testing out. And just one more thing, as I mentioned, this foundation is just a touch too light for me. I would move up a shade, although this is my normal shade in Shiseido foundations. I feel like the more full coverage along with the titanium dioxide just make it a little bit too light. And I think if you are interested in this foundation, start off sparingly and really, you know, start off with small amounts, blend it out, do one set at a time before it dries and that will help give you a more smooth coverage. I hope this review was helpful and I would love to know if you've tried these or if you are interested in trying them. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That really helps a lot and I hope to see you next time. So have a great day, stay safe and healthy and happy new year.